Will humans ever colonize the planet Mars? It's hard to say. It could very well be possible, yet preposterously difficult to accomplish. However, if we shift the conversation away from humans and onto robotic Martian settlers, then suddenly the world of possibility opens up. We've already had some really impressive success with getting robots to Mars and using them to explore our extraterrestrial neighbor, and with the rapid pace of advancement in robotics and space exploration here on Earth, the day is fast approaching when we might begin populating Mars with a whole variety of different robots, all with the ability to go places and complete tasks that human astronauts would never be able to do on our own. So, here is how robots might take over the planet Mars. This is the Space Race. We started our journey of launching spacecrafts to Mars way back in the 1970s. The Soviets made the first attempt with a lander probe called Mars 2. It crashed into the surface and became the first man-made object to impact Mars. That was followed by Mars 3, which landed but failed to communicate. Mars 6 lost communication before it landed, so props to the Soviet Union for their effort. The first successful robot on Mars was the American Viking 1 in 1976. It didn't do much, but it managed to operate for over 2200 Mars days, also known as SOLS. Where things really got interesting was with NASA's Pathfinder mission in 1997. This deployed the Sojourner rover, a little guy about the size of a remote control toy car that was able to drive around the planet for 86 souls, and provided us our first tour of an alien planet through its front-facing camera. The Spirit rover of 2007 scaled that up to a wheeled robot that was about knee-high and carried around a large array of sensors and cameras. The modern era of Mars rovers really started with Curiosity in 2012. This thing was the size of a dune buggy and equipped with its own robotic arm. And that brings us to the present day, Opportunity Rover. Launched in 2021, it's a very similar design to Curiosity, just with updated technology. Opportunity also delivered our first ever flying machine to an alien planet, the Ingenuity Helicopter Drone. Simultaneously to that mission, China deployed their own robot to Mars in 2021, the Zhurong Rover. This one is much smaller than Opportunity, it's more on the scale of the old Spirit rover, just with a much higher scientific and exploration capability. So that's what we've been able to accomplish so far, which is amazing, but where do we go from here? So while the rover has been a solid workhorse of a design for Mars exploration, scientists and engineers are already working on the next generation of interstellar explorer. And the biggest change is going to be the transition from wheels to legs. Wheels are the easiest way to make a robot mobile on solid ground, but they are definitely not the most effective method for getting around on the rugged terrain of the Martian surface. Mars is covered in loose, sandy dust, big chunks of jagged rock and steep slopes. So anyone who's ever tried to drive a car over similar terrain would know that wheels will quickly have some issues with traction. This was the fate of the Spirit rover from 2004. It got stuck in the sand and was never able to get back out. The battery died in the process of trying to free it. And the same thing nearly ended the high-tech modern opportunity. It got stuck on a sand dune and it took NASA an entire month of maneuvering to finally get it free. So NASA has been turning their attention to robots with legs. These designs were first popularized by Boston Dynamics with their Big Dog in 2005, a genuinely terrifying piece of technology that was envisioned as a military support drone for ground combat. Thankfully, that never caught on. The Marines thought it was too loud to be useful on the battlefield. But that four-legged robot technology eventually gave way to the Boston Dynamics Spot, which is a much smaller and less unsettling dog robot. This is the design that NASA is eyeing to launch into space. Spot can carry 14 kilograms of weight, travel at a top speed of 6 kilometers per hour, it can climb stairs, walk across gravel and uneven surfaces, even pick itself back up and self-right if it does fall down. Spot uses 360 degree camera vision with advanced AI obstacle avoidance algorithms. The most exciting possibility for the Spot robot on Mars is going to be their ability to explore caves. 
There are hundreds of underground tunnels on Mars that were cut into the surface by ancient lava flows. We can see the openings to those caves, the round skylight holes that occur when a thin portion of the ceiling collapses in. But we have no idea what the inside looks like. So that makes it a bad place to try and send a rover, but an ideal proving ground for a team of spot robots. The surface of Mars has been blasted away by hundreds of millions of years of dust storms and radioactive punishment by the solar winds. But underneath could be an entire sheltered ecosystem preserved from the days when Mars was a vibrant living world. There could be some freaky stuff down there. Of course, another solution is to take the ground out of the equation entirely and just fly around on Mars using a helicopter drone. This is something that NASA has already accomplished to great success with the Ingenuity robot. Ingenuity was a test to see if flight was even possible on Mars, a planet that has an atmosphere less than 1% as dense as Earth's. To compensate, Ingenuity was equipped with two sets of four foot long carbon fiber foam core blades. A solar panel fuels the avionics, sensors, antennas, and the onboard battery. All of that tech having been tuned to fly the helicopter with minimal to no input from NASA. This is important because it takes around half an hour for a signal to reach Mars from Earth. And there is no way around that. We can't do manual control with any of these robots. And despite that tremendous engineering challenge, Ingenuity proved it could fly about 10 to 15 feet in the air for up to 90 seconds. The little four pound flying robot was only expected to last a month or possibly up to five flights. But that prototype robot has lasted for over a year now, completing more than 30 missions. Ingenuity proves we can not only achieve lift on Mars reliably, but cheaply too. Ingenuity costs somewhere in the neighborhood of $85 million to build and operate, stunningly cheaper than the $2.7 billion for a Perseverance rover. Let's say that maybe, just for the sake of adventure and exploration, we did want to send human beings to Mars. If we plan on having them stay there for any extended period of time, then they are going to need a safe and reliable base of operations. Who better to build that for them than robots? One of the classic solutions to living on the frozen radioactive ball that is Mars has always been that maybe we would live under the ground. We'd definitely be well insulated and protected down there away from cosmic radiation, dust, and micrometeors. But then there are a ton of logistical challenges that come along with it. How do we dig the tunnels? Is the Martian surface even suitable for tunneling? What's the point of being on Mars if you just live under the ground the whole time? Well, the international design practice Hassel, in partnership with engineering from Eckersley O'Callaghan, have an idea to create an artificial cave on the surface of Mars that would present all of the benefits of being underground without any of the troubles that it brings along. The idea is to 3D print a giant shell using autonomous robots and the Martian soil, or regolith. The robots first set about gathering material from the surface of Mars. Rocks, dust, soil, everything that they can scoop up is all brought together and processed into a printable medium that will act like a paste when it's heated, but cool to be solid as rock. With this, the robots will print a shell layer by layer. They're essentially building a hollowed out mound. Then, when the human settlers arrive, we would deploy the interior of the base, which would be a series of collapsible, inflatable modules. So the habitat itself would essentially just be a bunch of balloons, which would make them very easy to pack and transport. Now, the modules themselves wouldn't be very sturdy, but that won't matter because the giant shell of solid rock will be doing all the heavy lifting when it comes to providing protection from the Martian elements. Once the habitat cave is finished, those same robots could be redeployed to different missions on the surface. Using the same equipment that collected regolith for the printing process, they can collect samples for human analysis and gather in situ resources to be used for everything from sustaining the colony to producing rocket fuel for the return to Earth. So that's the future that we're envisioning for the planet Mars. A whole variety of different robot explorers in the forms of rovers, walkers, and helicopters all working autonomously to uncover the mysteries of the ancient solar system. And then, when the time comes for humans to join them, the robots will have built us a dope Mars house to live in. The future 
is going to be wild. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.